Welcome to Second Chance Youth Ranch TV. I'm Perry Black, but on this show, Rachel Hubbard, our Daily Operations Director, is going to be meeting with two of our ladies and answering all of your most frequently asked questions about foster care. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Rachel Hubbard, Director of Second Chance Youth Ranch, and I am here with two of my very favorite humans on the planet. Um, this is Taylor Kaufman and Liz Garcia, and they are, oh my goodness, they are just so helpful with everything we do at the ranch, and I just wanted to have them join us today to tell us a little bit about what you guys do and maybe do a little recruiting push because uh, we need some more foster parents. So. Um, let's just get started by um, telling everybody like why you're here. What drew you to become a part of this ministry? You want to start, Liz? Yeah. So I'm Liz. Um, I have been a foster parent with Second Chance Ranch for four years, and um, I think what keeps me going is just the fact that I'm doing it for the Lord. Mm -hmm. That the yeah. Lord called yeah. us, even on hard days. He's the one that I lean on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if it wasn't because of Him, we would have given up probably. <laughs> um, and so just the fact that we do feel that God called us to this ministry. Um, now we don't we don't turn back. We don't see ourselves doing anything else um, besides filling the gap for hurting kids. Yeah. Um, aside from that, I've recently stepped into being uh, the foster care coordinator. Mm -hmm. So now I'm helping. Um, I'm glad. I love that I'm also, with my experience, I'm taking that and putting it into helping recruit more foster parents because I can put my own experience mm -hmm. into it and share with people why I have done it for so long and why it would be a good decision for them to yes. do it and to take that step. I think a lot of people think about it. A lot of people pray about it mm -hmm. but taking that first step is hard oh, um, yeah. because it is a life-changing decision um, mm -hmm. but what comes out of it is always better than any hard day yeah. um, and so I do feel that if people are feeling in their heart drawn to this ministry yeah. um, or just to foster care in general to take that first step or at least reach out to us and find out more information about how you could get involved and plugged in. Yeah. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. so good. yeah so for people who don't know Second Chance Ranch is a private placement agency uh, many years ago, we were just a ranch campus with a few homes on it, and now we are way, way more than that. Um, and so we actually recruit and train and license individual foster homes throughout central Arkansas. And so just any any family that says, hey, I want to foster, but I would like to use um, a faith-based agency, or I would like to have some extra support, mm -hmm. I would like to... Um, you know, have kids very intentionally placed in my home instead of just asked to take just anybody, um, a private agency might be a good fit for you. And so we will open open you up and get you started as foster parents. And that's, that's what Liz does. She recruits and trains and opens um, families to foster in their home. Taylor, tell us a little bit about you. Like, tell us what you do here and yeah. why you're here. So I am the director's assistant, so I help you guys with lots of different things, different aspects, but I really feel like the Lord led my husband and I here. We were a product of, or I was a product of the youth group here. I remember back in the day where it was just the ranch campus. Um, we had, we went to camp together. I think you were pregnant with Bronley at the time. Like <laughs> it was, we, and then we left and we lived in St. Louis for a decade. And then the Lord just kind of clearly called us back to Arkansas. And as soon as I did that, I heard the Lord say, message Rachel and see if there's a position needed. And I was like, this is weird. It's on Facebook. So sorry, but is this position needed? And she's like, oh my gosh. So um, the Lord just, his hand is just so in it. Yeah. And even back then, the mission and the call of what the ranch was doing was just so imprinted on my heart that I'm like, this is something that I always just want to have, like the Lord just be so evident. And um, he's just doing really big things through the ranch, and I'm just so honored to be a part of it now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We're so glad you're here, both of you <laughs> yes. ladies. And I mean, if you've ever led any kind of ministry or project or whatever, just to have people who understand the vision and run with it. Um, it's just, it's a blessing, you know, mm -hmm. and I feel like both of you ladies do that. Um, what, what have y'all noticed or what do you think is different about Second Chance Ranch? There are lots of nonprofits. There mm -hmm. are lots of ministries, lots of foster care ministries. What makes us different? 
Yeah, I mean, what I always tell people that are not familiar with what we do, that I feel makes us stand out, not first of all, that we are a faith-based organization. Mm -hmm. um, and second of all, just a family atmosphere mm -hmm. that we have. We really all support each other. Um, this is a very particular thing to do. So not everyone out there understands what foster parents deal with on a daily right. basis. But we have a whole group of people here that understand and that have been doing it for numerous years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm always like, you know, once you go through the process with us, you're not gonna be just left alone. Yeah. Um, we're gonna be here to support you. We'll provide a mm -hmm. case manager for you. You'll have someone that you can call on at some point. Yeah. Um, There's whenever something you're about unsure. being in the trenches mm -hmm. with other people who get that it and who it. think mm -hmm. like you and yeah. who hear from the Lord like you and who yeah. just roll up their sleeves with you like mm -hmm. and bond you in this way yeah. that is just, Hard to imitate. Yeah. yeah, sometimes we need that kind of support of run kids here, run kids there. But sometimes we just need someone to talk to or someone we need someone to pray for us yeah. and with us. Mm -hmm. And I feel that we can find that in every person that's part of our team right now. And we drink yeah. a lot of coffee together yes. too. <laughs> <laughs> we do, we do. We do. Yes. Yes. We yeah. do. Yeah. What about you, Taylor? Like, What is different about this ministry to I you? I think it's really just the nurturing and the care. And I attribute that to you guys and what you and Mr. Billy do and Chad mm -hmm. do as like, well, you just really care for your team. Yeah. And it's just so evident because you guys are there. Your hands are in everything. You put your hands to everything. And everything is like, Holy Spirit, guide us through what do we need to do now? And I think the leading of the Lord through everything is just so evident. And even in the hard times, it's like, I think Liz and I were praying together this morning yeah. because it was like we were walking through something. We were like, let's pray really quick. And so yeah. just having that opportunity to do that is really amazing. And it's really special. And not yeah. every ministry gets to encounter that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... I cannot imagine trying to do what we do without the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Let me just tell you, yeah. because the problems that we're seeing and facing are overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, children who have been through the most gut-wrenching trauma that you can imagine, yeah. you know? I mean, I was driving a teenage girl to school today, and she was like, "Miss Rachel, if I ever have to go back to my biological home, they're gonna remove me in a body bag because mm. wow, I'll, I'll kill myself. Like I cannot go back and experience that again. Yeah. Y'all, that is just our conversation in the car driving to school. Yeah. The trauma that these kids have experienced is, mm -hmm. is, is too much. It's yeah. too much for us to feel like we could make a difference. Yeah. It's too much to feel like we could do anything yeah. but God. Yeah. Yeah. But God, right. you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I would not want to be doing this without Him. <laughs> right. It's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, one million percent. So I definitely think that that is one of the things that makes mm -hmm. us special. Is yeah. like we know who our source is. Yeah. We know where to go. Yeah. We know that when we're at the end of ourselves, He's just at the beginning. Yeah, and so the good. Word says that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm -hmm. And so that is literally my prayer so many mm -hmm. times. Is I just get on my knees and I'm like, Daddy, trade me. I want <laughs> I want your burden and your yoke. Can you mm -hmm. take mine and let's trade? Yeah. You know, and God meets me there yeah. every time. So, so we're going to take, go ahead. There's something that you always say that it's like, we weren't called to change the kids. We were just called to love them. Yeah. Right. And that there is freedom in that too, because like, we're just going to love them and Lord, you do the rest <laughs> because what they need, only you can give them anyway. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We're going to take a break. A mission field around you is filled with young hearts needing a forever family. And at Second Chance Youth Ranch, our team is committed to providing healthy, stable, loving homes and families to hurting children in the Arkansas foster care system and those up for adoption. Please contact us if you feel the tug at your heart to help foster or adopt and find out the steps you could take to help fulfill a child's lifelong dream. Maybe you can't foster or adopt, but you could help. The need for thousands of children in the system is staggering. But with the help of faithful partners and business alliances, we are meeting those needs right now. Would you help us make a difference? Every gift, regardless of size, impacts a child's life directly and helps provide for a home in the gap right now. Visit the Second Chance Youth Ranch website at 2CYR.org to read more, watch the stories, and to make a contribution for a hurting child's care. Monthly partners are needed, so please contact us right away. And as you partner with this ministry, you are partnering with the Heavenly Father that has promised to be Father to the fatherless. God bless you for helping Second Chance Youth Ranch. 
Welcome back, Rachel here, and I've got Taylor, who is our, um, I mean, I guess her title is assistant to the directors, but she's kind of the everything lady. She does <laughs> helps with everything at Second Chance Ranch. Mm -hmm. And then Liz is our foster care coordinator, yeah. who is in charge of opening new homes for mm -hmm. us. So um, I wanted to just get with you ladies and let y'all share a little bit about, of your passion and yeah. your job duty. Mm -hmm. Taylor, one of your jobs is to kind of open up a little window to the public and yeah. let them see the heart behind what we do. Right. We try to communicate that through social media mm -hmm. a lot. Yes. You know, we want people to see, you know, our kids' stories. We yeah. want them to be inspired by them, mm -hmm. encouraged. We want them to see what the Lord is doing. Yeah. And we want people to be called to action too. Yeah. So just tell us a little bit about how you, how are you doing that? How are you letting people see what, what we do here? Right. It's hard sometimes, especially when we're concerning foster care, where they can't see the pictures. They can't right. touch and feel a lot of the things because um, a lot of that's private and it needs to be sa a safe place for these kids yeah. to be. But we still want to invite people into the mission, into the call of what we're doing. And how we do that is explain that sometimes it's really hard and sometimes we, you know, Rachel does amazing posts about like in the the trenches this is what we're doing and I feel like it connects with people in a real way and then other ways that we do that is through like Instagram and we do it through our stories like if we're worshiping or praying as a staff like we'll you know pan across just so people can see hey we're in this moment right now praying to the Lord for this thing and it really just takes someone who's on the outside and brings them in to be a part of it and experiencing it because if you're donating if you're um, volunteering then you want to put your hands to something yeah. and allowing social media as a way to invite them in to access the things that we can allow them to access is really important yeah and we want to make sure that we're doing that with excellence and that we're doing it with a way that's still safe for the kids in their experience and what they're going through but then also like hey this is what we're doing this is why we do what we do and I think it just resonates with the heart of the people that aren't in it immediately but yeah. want to be a part of it you're right it's like such a balance of being authentic and real yeah but also protecting the vulnerability of our children right and so we try to be really careful about that yeah um, but I don't feel like anybody's going to get involved if they don't know what's happening right yeah. you know mm -hmm. and so like tell what all are we on Yes. <laughs> well, to be relevant, you have to be on everything at this point. But we, yeah. we're on TikTok. Hey. And so, we're so cool. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we're still working on that because that's what we're trying to figure it out. Um, Instagram, for sure. We relaunched Instagram. Um, our website is brand new and beautiful. And so we're just kind of taking steps forward to make sure that our information's out there and it looks good. And so um, that's what we're working on now. And, you know, follow us on Instagram. TikTok, Facebook for sure, um, and things like that. Those are just basic ones. Yeah, and you know what? Like that is such an easy way for people to um, give to our ministry. Yeah, one minute is literally just click, click share. Yeah, you know, maybe you can't foster, maybe you can't adopt, maybe you don't have a bunch of money mm -hmm. or time to donate. Yeah. But anybody can click share, and you have no idea the impact that that has. Mm -hmm. And somebody could see that post yeah. that you share and mm -hmm. decide that they want to be a foster parent or that mm -hmm. they want to adopt. Yeah. And so what an easy way yeah. for people to partner with percent. us, right? It, it, it makes our reach exponentially more when right. you just share it to your page, yeah. when you just share what your heart is. It makes other people want to get involved on in what your passion is. If your family sees you sharing something, well, let me click that and see what's going on with that. And then they can share it and it just reaches way more people. A lot of our needs are met really quickly because of the reach that we have through Facebook. And it's just yeah. like God uses all of those things to reach these kids in such a big way that like, how could we not use it? You know right. what I mean? Yeah. I mean, y'all, it has been years since I've posted a need and, and it hasn't been met. Right. Like mm -hmm. uh, if we need a baby crib, if we need clothes for a new set of siblings, if we need a meal dropped off, I will post it. And within an hour, people are, yep, I'll do that. They're jumping on it. And mm -hmm. like, I just... I, I will never take that for granted. Right. Yeah. You know what I, Like just to see the Lord stir the hearts of people mm -hmm. on behalf of these children that we love so much right. is mm -hmm. a really good reminder that he loves them so yeah. much more than so we good. do, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But if there is one need that we could shout from the rooftops and go on and on and on about, it is the need for more foster parents. That's right. Our state is literally in a crisis, yeah. you guys. Mm -hmm. um, oh, well, I don't know if I should share that or I'm gonna well let me just tell you this this is real okay DCFS called us recently 
and they said, we have two children who are in a home that need to be removed, but I'm not going to remove them unless you have a home to place them in. Wow. Because what is the point of taking children out of a negative or dangerous environment if, we're, if we have nowhere to take them once we remove them, right? Yes. That is a scary place for us to be in as a state. Yeah. We have about 4,100 children in foster care right now and only about 1,500 foster homes. Guys, that is not okay. Not okay. So we are desperately crying out, please open your home to foster. Mm -hmm. And Liz, that, that's what you're doing. Like yes. you're putting that yeah. plea out there, you're helping families. What are we looking for in foster parents? Yeah. Uh, well, since we are a faith-based organization, you know, we would like for foster parents to be plugged into a church. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we wholeheartedly believe that, like I said earlier, only God can help the kids and meet them where they're at. Absolutely. Um, and, and we're not asking anybody to do this without Jesus. Exactly. Good luck with that. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, I mean, we would want them to be part of their local church. Mm -hmm. um, we want the kids to be prayed with and prayed over and right. just uh, shown over and over the love of God while yeah. they're in your home. Um, but of course, before we get to that point, there are some technical steps that we have to yeah. walk through. Um, so initially, we would just have a conversation to see what area would be better you know can you only take one child do you only have one bedroom does that bedroom can that bedroom fit two beds you know mm -hmm. could first we would talk a little bit about like what the person's desire is and mm -hmm. how they could serve what kind um, of kids would be a good fit for them exactly, if you have a teenage yeah. boy we're probably not gonna ask you to foster a teenage girl yes things like yes that. exactly mm -hmm. after we talk about those logistics most people fall in love with this ministry anyway, and they do want to be a part of it and serve under our umbrella. So then we would do the normal background checks, driver's license checks. We have to be able to tell the state that we did everything they requested from us mm -hmm. and to say this home is a good fit. Yeah. We would train you because we're not going to throw anyone, <laughs> throw kids at anyone without training. We would talk about how to handle kids with trauma and how to handle certain mm -hmm. behaviors and, yeah. and all those things. We would do about a three-day training. We do a home study, and then after that, we can tell the state, this person or this couple has done everything that you request for them to be able to be an open home. Then we would start talking, like you said, about which kids would be a good fit in their home. Yeah. And then after that, we continue to provide services. Absolutely. Uh, we're not just giving you a kid and, and we're done. Yes, yeah. therapy and case management and all that. Um, because it's a, it's a learning curve. You know, it's not just any kid that you're getting. Um, so, and it takes a while to get used to it, you know, and um, how, what's, what should I be doing? Is this right? Is this wrong? Uh, so I think initially there are a lot of calls, a lot of that extra support needed. Yeah. But the more you do it, the more confident you become and yeah. kind of the more you're like, okay, I'm empowered to do this right. uh, without needing to call on someone all the time. But we are there when yeah. you need it. That's yeah. perfect. We'll be right back. My name is Adiz and I'm nine years old. My name is Tashiana and I am seven years old. My name is Rashad and I'm five years old. My favorite thing is to play with my Paw Patrol toys. My favorite to play with um, PJ Masks. Ooh. Mine is playing with Barbies. What the? Oh my God. Huh? I love about my brothers is they are so nice to me. And then my my sister is so nice to me too because she's not. Oh, come here! Oh, she's not. She's my not turn. mean at all. She's not mean. My turn. She's not. I am not. So she's I love my sister and my brother because I like to hug them. Oh, me too, bro. So nice. Me too. Bro. Ew, don't kiss me. You love. Me too. Me too. Your lips. <laughs> me too, bro. Did you guys live together? No. no. But we was been separated, I don't know. How long have you been separated? For like a lot of years. Yeah. Do you guys want to be together? <laughs> yes. Yes. Us three. Why do you want to be together? Because we love each other. Yes. So I can hug him and so he can be in my room and play with me. I want us three to be together so we can play with each other. I want a nice family, and I want a calm family that can calm down. I want people to know that I'm handsome. I want, I want to people know about me to be nice and stuff. If you could have one wish, 
What would you wish for? I wish for Adis to live with me and Ty. Welcome back. Rachel Hubbard, Director of Operations, here with Liz Garcia, who's our foster care coordinator, and Taylor Kaufman, who is our everything girl. So I um, wanted to just let you guys know um, how what, what the ranch is up to, you know, about different opportunities to foster through us and that sort of thing. So we are definitely not just an old western town anymore, not just a little ranch campus. And um, we do have that. But um, we have many different opportunities for loving on children in the system right now. So we offer campus homes and those are for families that want to foster a large sibling group and let them stay together. Most of you probably don't have room in your house for five or six or seven kids to just move in tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And if you did, you wouldn't have a vehicle to drive them in. Um, you probably wouldn't be able to feed and clothe them. Like There's a lot that goes into that. Mm -hmm. So our campus homes kind of eliminate every barrier there is to fostering a large sibling group. Big home, big van, a stipend, so you don't have to work outside the home, pay for all your groceries, give you a lot of assistance. And then we also open homes out in the community, traditional foster care. If you would just like to become a foster parent and welcome a sweet kiddo into your house, we will open you and license you and help you do that. And we also have therapeutic foster care, and that's those kids have my heart, y'all. Those are the harder to place kiddos with more intense needs. They've been through more intense trauma and they need really specialized parenting. So we're recruiting homes for that. And then we also do emergency and respite care where a child is just come into foster care and needs somewhere to go that moment. And so we put them in your home and then we take the time to find a more appropriate long-term placement mm -hmm. or maybe a, a um, foster family is going on a cruise and it's their 20th anniversary and they need somebody to keep their kiddos while they're gone. That's what respite and emergency care is. So um, that's kind of just in a nutshell what we're looking for. If any of those things are appealing to you, Liz would love to talk to you and share more about that with you. Um, but I wanted to give an opportunity, I guess, for each of you guys to, um, again, peel back that layer a little bit and just share like, your motivation is probably not money. It's probably not fame. You're doing this because of the kids, yeah. right? And so um, I know that y'all probably have some favorite moments with the mm -hmm. kids. Just share share a little bit of the story, like something that happened to you that was meaningful with one of our kids. Who wants to go first? I'll do it. Okay. Um, what was really fun was one of our campus homes that we had just opened and just built. We had just decorated these beautiful rooms for girls. And it was just like, we made sure every little trinket was where it needed to be so that when they walked in, they felt like they were welcomed and they yes. were wanted and they were valued. And I remember getting the call from Rachel being like, we have a boy coming into the home. So we were like <laughs> rushing to Hobby Lobby to get boy things. I'm like, what is he like? We don't know. And it was well, really we fun. thought that home was going to be just for pregnant or parenting teen girls. Yes. And we, because we wanted to meet that need. Right. Because if a, if a, young woman is going to say yes to pregnancy, yes. then we need to say yes to wrapping around her after that baby is born. Yeah. But when you get a phone call and there's a little boy that day who yes. needs a home yes. and you have an empty bedroom, how do you say no to that? Right. No. You run to Hobby Lobby, right? You to Hobby Lobby. <laughs> and you get things and you hang it up and hope they like it. And yeah. it's what, exactly what we did. And then a couple of weeks later, we had the opportunity to actually respite for that family. And we got to see like him in his room and everything like that. But then we connected with one of the, the moms who was pregnant. And like, I remember she was just having a hard time writing down. She was doing her, um, whatever her counseling had showed her to do. Like, let me, let me write down the things that are real to you in this moment. Like a therapy assignment. Yes, yeah, so like an assignment. Yeah. So she was taking whatever she was taught and did it on her own. She got a pen and paper and started writing things down. And she just like, can I tell these to you? This is what I'm feeling right now. And I had the opportunity to sit with her in her room and just say, that's so valid. Like yeah. those are really hard things that you're walking through. Can I pray for you? And we were able to sit in that room together and pray together and give a giant hug and then find some sweet tarts and eat sweet tarts together because that's what she was craving. And it was really great. And just that moment of being able to pray with her and just like, hey, you're safe, you're yeah. good, mm -hmm. and everything's gonna be okay was one of the things that will always imprint on my heart for them. There is nothing like a moment like that where yeah. you're like, God is using me right yes, now. Yes, yeah, like, yeah. Man, that feels good. Mm -hmm. What I mean, Liz, you've been fostering for four years. 
Well, tell us a favorite moment of yeah. yours with these sweet babies. I'll just share a funny one. So we have a five-year-old boy and he is hilarious. He really is. <laughs> so usually when kids come into care, they get what's called a psychological evaluation at some point to just see where they're at, see how much therapy they'll need and all that stuff. So I was going with him to his psychological evaluation and he, on the way there, well, Miss Liz, what is this doctor gonna do to me? <laughs> and I was like, well, she's not really gonna do anything to your body. She just wants to know more about your mind. Yeah. He was like, well, why does she wanna know about my mind? My mind is special to me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just thought that was funny. He just always says very quirky things, mm -hmm. but we've had some big wins with him. Like he came to us right before he turned five. And what four-year-old does not like ice cream and cake? Like he was the pickiest eater we've oh, ever yeah. had. I mean, he literally ate three things and that was spaghetti, mac and cheese, and nuggets. Like, that was it, <laughs> nothing else. Um, and so like now, I mean, the other day he ate a whole like kid's meal from McDonald's and he would not even look at a burger. Like I played, I play, the first time I placed a burger in front of him, he took everything out and just ate the bread. Yeah. If we would put a taco in front of him, he'd take everything out and just eat the tortilla. A like lot he, of our kids aren't mm -hmm. exposed to many foods. Yes. They live off ramen noodles typically. Yes, yeah. And so just to see him explore and like new yeah. food, like he's ice cream now. He, he's still iffy about cake, but he's <laughs> ice cream. Uh, and so just seeing those wins in different yeah. areas of their life. Um, mm -hmm. He struggled a lot at daycare we barely get calls now yeah. um, so just seeing him growing and flourishing is really yeah. like what just makes you want to continue all kids have potential and yes. in the right setting they can meet those goals yeah. so just Absolutely. seeing them hitting those different areas really is really special yeah so good. Mm -hmm. one of my favorite moments that I'll just share real quick as we wrap up um, one of our foster families had a, a little girl who was just having a major tantrum at bedtime. She'd been screaming for hours and they called and said, Rachel, I need your help. Yeah. So I went over there and I sat down on the edge of her bed with her and she's just screaming and crying and going on and on. And I finally got her to calm down enough to say something. And I said, what is wrong? And she goes, I just miss my mom. Mm -hmm. And so I pulled her into my arms and um, she finally started kind of the screaming stop and she's just still <laughs> like heaving mm, yeah. and sobbing and I just pulled her in and I just started singing a worship song over her mm. and now it's Jesus loves me mm -hmm. started singing Jesus loves me and rocking her back and forth and mm -hmm. she just got very quiet and after a few minutes I felt her just sink against me and yeah. relax mm -hmm. and I'm just holding her and she doesn't know it but tears are streaming mm. down my face mm. and she, her little body finally after hours had just calmed down yeah. and yeah. given over to that peaceful moment and I was okay. like this this is why I'm here yeah, yeah this exactly. right here yeah you know yeah. Um, so what we do is hard and it's intense mm -hmm. and there are moments where we don't know how we can keep going but it is so worth it. Yes. These kids need you.